Stephanie Dobson and I'm a collaborative lawyer and family mediator based in the provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan, Canada. I've been a member of the International Academy of Collaborative Professionals, the IACP, for many years. And I was especially moved when I learned that the 2022 theme for the UN recognized event, World Creativity and Innovation Week, is collaboration. What an opportunity to showcase collaborative divorce and its link to creativity and innovation and to take it to the world stage. This film is dedicated to all collaborative divorce and collaborative law professionals around the world who are using this negotiation process to create healthy, thriving families. My passion for creating dialogue amongst professionals drove me to create this film as my contribution to this year's celebration of World Creativity and Innovation Week. The professionals in this video share their perspective of the unique benefits of collaborative divorce as a creative and innovative conflict resolution model, as well as its ability to foster the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 16, which is to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. There are two intended audiences for this video, the public and divorce professionals. It's my hope that by watching this video, the public will be impacted in at least three ways. First, they'll learn about collaborative divorce and how it can have such a positive effect on separating and divorcing families. Second, they'll learn that our ability as collaborative divorce professionals to be creative and innovative in helping separating and divorcing couples to find resolution is at the root of why choosing collaborative divorce can be the key to creating a healthy, thriving family after separation or divorce. And finally, they'll learn how collaborative divorce can help them in ways that traditional litigation cannot. As a professional watching this video, I hope that you're able to have the same paradigm shift that I had in working through its production. I have always known that part of my job as a collaborative divorce professional is to be creative and innovative, but it wasn't until this dialogue about the interrelationship between collaborative divorce, creativity, and innovation arose as part of this video production that had me truly make this paradigm shift as to how fundamentally linked these concepts are. This linkage is part of the reason I love being a collaborative divorce practitioner. There's an expectation and I believe an obligation on the team to discharge that creativity and innovation to bring about settlement that creates healthy, thriving families after separation or divorce that families want for themselves and for their children. What a valuable opportunity we have in this collaborative divorce process to go outside of the constraints of the rules of procedure and of the confines of what the law will permit and to dig deeper to find resolution that meets the needs of the family before us having regard to, but not constrained by the legal framework. I thought it would be interesting for our audience to take a moment to learn a little bit more about the UN recognized World Creativity and Innovation Week. It's celebrated each year between April 15th and 21st, and World Creativity and Innovation Day is celebrated on April 21st. This movement was founded on May 25, 2001 in Toronto, Canada by Marcy Segal. As part of this celebration, people around the world are challenged to do something that showcases our creative and innovative thinking in advancing the particular year's theme. Marcy's inspiration was born out of this philosophy, and I quote, wouldn't it be great if people knew how to use their natural ability to generate new ideas, make new decisions, take new actions, and achieve new outcomes, to make the world a better place and to make their place in the world better too, end quote. And so Marcy set off to help creativity flourish around the world. At first, it was just one day, April 21st, the day before Earth Day. In 2006, the movement became a whole week, starting on Leonardo da Vinci's birthday, April 15th, and ending on the original marker day of April 21st. In 2017, the UN granted the World Creativity and Innovation Day as an International Day of Observance. The UN's purpose in doing so was to raise awareness of the role of creativity and innovation in all aspects of human development, and to encourage people to use creativity and problem solving for all issues relating to achieving the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. It's exciting for the collaborative divorce movement that this year's theme for World Creativity and Innovation Week is collaboration. The ICP has been invited to be official participants of the celebration. 
Participants were chosen because of their unique efforts and connection to using their concept of collaboration to creatively and innovatively promote the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Let's hear from our panel of professionals. What is creativity and innovation to you? Creativity is all about finding unique solutions that work for people, you know, and it, it's about thinking outside of the box and trying to find something that maybe somebody else hasn't thought of and coming it from it from a different perspective. Innovation, I think, can be broadly thought of as new ideas, new ways of looking at things, new methods or new products that have value. And for me, creativity is the active process that's necessary uh, in when we're working in innovative ideas. The possibility of do whatever you do, but thinking out of the box. So I come from a family where uh, my grandparents were artists, my father was a designer, and I sort of always felt I wasn't creative enough because I was studying law and being a lawyer. Um, but, but then I thought that it's not what you do, but how you do it that really measures your sort of um, creativity. And it's how you put, putting new thinking, new way of doing things in what you do that speaks of the creativity and innovation. Creativity comes from opening yourself up to outside the box, outside of your thinking mind and opening into your heart and the congruence between your mind and your heart but dropping off as much as possible your own beliefs and opening up to the creativity of the universe. So creativity to me means using resourcefulness, out-of-the-box thinking to come up with new non-linear ideas and innovation to me is, is a new way of thinking, uh, cutting edge, um, so that you have a greater understanding and greater awareness. I think to me, creativity and innovation means setting yourself free from the constraints that stop us from thinking outside of the box. Creativity is the freedom to allow human imagination to generate something fresh, um, whether it's an idea or a perspective, a system change or a piece of art. Well, as a human being, it might mean one thing, but as a lawyer, it means the opportunity to have creative space in my brain. Lawyers are so set up in an adversarial model that we tend to be thinking very much defensively and so collaborative divorce and looking at creativity and innovation to me as a lawyer means creating space where I'm not defending or fighting anyone anymore, but I'm looking to bring together the pieces into a whole. Yeah, I think, I think creativity means that you are open to ideas, that you're really genuinely curious that you are looking at how things really work, that you come at the world with some wonder. Now, I wonder what this, what's really going on here? What's really driving this? What's underneath this? Um, and that you are, you, you're willing to try. You're willing to try things, see how they go, fail if they don't, try them again. So I think creativity and, and innovation is all about being open to looking at really what's going on and trying to see how we might do them differently or better. Collaborative divorce is one of the process options you can choose when you are separating or divorcing. Most people are familiar with divorce court, but collaborative divorce is an option that enables couples to divorce without fighting in court. In a collaborative divorce, each spouse has a lawyer so that each of you have your own advocate to support and advise you in your case. Through a series of joint meetings, the case is resolved without the fighting, animosity and long-term emotional and financial damage that court can cause. 
At the first joint meeting, you and your former spouse state what is important to each of you and to your family. For example, you may express that it's important to you that your children have a meaningful relationship with each parent post-divorce, or that each of you and your former spouse have financial security and stability, or that the children experience a two-home childhood free from parental conflict. The professionals who are at the table with you during the process can be varied depending on your family's needs. There will always be you, your former spouse, and each of your lawyers. Other members of the team could include a financial professional who assists your family to gather the financial information about your assets and debts and helps you to develop your two-home budget. Another team member may be a trained mental health professional who is there to help you to develop your parenting plan if you have children and to coach on communication techniques to keep the process moving. Communication breakdowns can slow the process down, which can increase the cost and time to reach resolution. Your collaborative divorce team is built based on your family's particular needs. Instead of fighting in court, you will meet with your collaborative divorce team in a meeting setting to review your financial documentation, to build a parenting plan, to develop options for the division of assets and debts, to evaluate those options, and to negotiate an agreement that is acceptable to you both. Once all of the issues have been resolved, the lawyers draft the agreement and finalize the divorce usually without you ever needing to appear in front of a judge. Your entire family can be less harmed by the divorce process when you choose collaborative divorce. As I was researching talking points for this video, I love how often the term creativity came up in the context of collaborative divorce. Creativity and innovation really are at the heart of this dispute resolution process. At its most fundamental level, the collaborative divorce process is a multi-step negotiation process that encourages separating or divorcing spouses to understand what's important to each other, to gather all the information required to be fully informed, to brainstorm options, and then to put all that together to find resolution. As we go through the process, we deliberately make sure that we don't skip any steps. It's really the putting together of the interests, the information, and the options that really brings about the creative and innovative solutions. As a team of professionals alongside the separating or divorcing parties, we can craft resolution that works best for their family, considering all of the available information and ideas. Steve Jobs said, and I quote, creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something. It seems obvious to them after a while. That's what finding solutions is about in collaborative divorce. Understanding enough of what's important to the family, gathering enough information, and generating enough options that will bring solutions to the surface that work for the whole family. How do you see creativity and innovation being a vital part of the collaborative divorce process? Um, it's a, a singular process that allows the professionals to work with each family to create their unique solution. And that's creativity and innovation right there. You can see how more than anything, that kind of process would require creativity and innovation. Collaborative divorce started out of creativity and innovation. I mean, it's a huge innovation for lawyers to say, we need other people on the team. And so I think that really the whole idea that people can now look at lawyers, mental health professionals, and financial neutrals to help their family in a holistic way, that in and of itself is a huge innovation in the legal industry. Innovation is when creativity meets functionality for the betterment of the whole. And so I see collaborative divorce as both creative and innovative. It's creative because it's something fresh. It's an antidote to the traditional adversarial model for divorce. And it's innovative because it's functional and it's self-assessing. So it can adapt and change as the circumstances require. 
divorce speaks about the separation. Uh, it can be a family that really uh, stops to be a family if you see it uh, in a sort of sad way. But the, the innovation is instead, we try and do that sitting together around the table. So that's the innovative part of, of the way, the paradox in a way of the collaborative divorce process. It's essential to have creativity and innovation when working through the collaborative divorce process. It's important to have flexibility and being able to um, be open to alternatives, to resolving uh, conflict and uh, to process ways, new ways of being as a family is going through the uncoupling process. Um, and it needs to be tailored individually to the family's cultural background, to their um, to their ways of their families function. Uh, and, and sometimes we need to use creativity by um, working in triads or dyads, uh, just so that we can bring the right expertise at the right time to the right place, just to deal with the situations that are presented. I think that's all exactly what collaborative divorce is. I mean, we're really challenging in our process what what a lawyer is, what the what the the real role and impact of a lawyer is, what do clients really need from us? How do we define what uh, matters to our clients? How do we work with other professionals in much more coordinated ways than perhaps we were trained to? Where we're looking at in a much more curious, deeper way, what what's going on for the clients in front of us? Um, and looking way beyond helping, helping us look as lawyers in particular, way beyond the confines of, of what the law allows us to address. And at the same time, not throw the law out. So it's, a, it's a, an innovative process of combining what matters to people in terms of their values and their goals and their interests and, and all those things with within the context of a legal framework. So it's a it's a pretty innovative approach to to helping people that are in front of us that are in conflict and how we help them move forward in ways that are really are meaningful. I think uh, uh, collaboration and creativity is so important for collaboration. When we started, the focus tended to be on materialistic things how to do things in a down-to-earth kind of way. And the main thing is to bring in the feeling and to bring in the fact that everybody that is involved as a participant in collaborative law has a collaborative law franchise. That means they do their own creativity within the limited rule of collaborative law. The limited rule is you withdraw if it doesn't work. And two, that you are into the highest consciousness you can hold, which is basically love. And uh, uh, with creativity, uh, love is the thing that dissolves conflict. And out of that combination, uh, creativity starts to arise uh, because the participants need to hold their highest space while they're dealing with the conflicted couple, not getting down to the energy of the clients. And that is love. And uh, it's the revolutionary thing that's hard for people to grasp because we're not used to talking about love. We think of love in a romantic sense, but it really is a loving kindness or a respect. And we should live our life from that place rather than from the dualistic love and fear place. And beyond love and fear is love. Collaborative divorce is a very creative process. It's a process where we look to the clients to understand their needs. And then we do two things. We design the process 
so that it works for the clients. And then we listen carefully and we help them find their own solutions that are unique and work for their family. So it's not a cookie cutter type thing. It's not a, you know, this is how you have to do it. We don't, we're not dogmatic about the process and we certainly are not dogmatic about uh, the outcome. We're there for the clients to support them to find solutions that work for them and their family. You know, I oftentimes will have clients start their consultations or interviews of me by saying, you must have heard this a hundred or a thousand times before. And I get to tell, look them in the eye and hold them with my heart and say, you know what? I've never heard this before because I've never met you. And you are a unique individual. So this sense of creativity and innovation, when joined with this unique being that I am meeting for the first time and their family of origin, their trauma, their children, their hopes and dreams that they're bringing to our relationship, which is limited in a point of time, is when it, it's like a chemical reaction, I guess, is that when you put it all together, the creativity or the possibilities, the potential for the creativity and the innovation that comes from that reaction of joining together um, is just essential to the collaborative process. If collaborative divorce was the norm for families going through separation or divorce, and children saw this approach being used in their own family, how would that impact society and promote the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions? So the shift that's going on now is a shift to love. And when the shift happens with enough participants, there will be a shift of our planet into what I call heaven on earth. But if children are, are lucky, the first conflict they actually, um, they might ha happen to, to witness is the conflict in their family. And so being exposed to a conflict that is dealt uh, in a hard uh, and difficult way is going to uh, impact them and influence them and their future living and the way they understand how people can actually deal with conflict. On the other hand, seeing that people can have different opinions, seeing that their parents can even choose to take different paths and uh, go and live in different houses, but they can do that in a respectful, if not even peaceful way, I think that is a great lesson to uh, allow new generations to see uh, different different opportunities with, to deal with conflict. So conflict is part of our life. We will always uh, experiment this. We cannot avoid it. It's not good to avoid it, but we have to know how to face it and deal it uh, in a way that is respectful of the other and that is at the same time um, not disruptive for all the people we have around. It would be my wish to have collaborative uh, divorce be the norm and to move completely away from litigation. I do believe that with conflict resolution, we are going to ensure that we're going to reduce intergenerational trauma so that children can grow up without being exposed to intense um, conflict and upset that's going to influence the rest of their lives. These are their models, their parents are their models. So if we can give some tools, it's going to make a difference um, on a micro level, a meso level, community level, as well as a societal level. If we could build foundations, institutions, political parties, uh, a, 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 you know, a myriad of, of of institutions that would allow us to see each other, accept difference, and communicate in a way that's honest, not sweeping difficult issues under the rug, having those tough conversations, standing up for what matters, letting go what doesn't. Uh, I think we could change the world, I really do. And I think that's um, perhaps, Stephanie, what drives most of us in the work that we're doing. I, I don't think the importance of it can be understated at all well this question kind of brings tears to my eyes because 
you know, my, my daily practice starts with my coffee mug, um, which is this peacemaking, let it begin with me, is how I want children to feel. I want children to feel that their parents are creating a legacy for them and they are modeling the behavior that they want to see their children carry on into future generations. So imagine a traditional litigation divorce and the toxicity and the remnants that that leaves on the children, you know, in their eyes, in their hearts, you know, as they go through their lives and in their peers. When consider the peacemaking, let it begin with me. If the parents are saying to each other and to themselves, look at, we have an immense responsibility here because it is our children are the future of our world. And the existence and the, um, you know, the world becoming a better pay place is going to be in the hands of our children and our grandchildren. So collaborative divorce is a family-focused, children-first-focused conflict resolution process that I, I really think can change the face of the world and make the world a better place. You know, parents raise children to be good citizens in the world. And so the more that we as divorce professionals help families make a healthy transition from being in one house to, to many, the greater chance we have of growing children into adults who will be responsible, contributing, creative, and caring citizens in the world. I think it achieves all those goals. Since the sustainability development goals aim to significantly reduce all forms of violence, um, and they want to work with governments and communities to end conflict and insecurity uh, by promoting the rule of law and human rights, at the that's at the macro level, but at the micro level, when it comes to a divorce, the ability to manage conflict is at the heart of building effective, accountability, inclusive institutions, including the institution of marriage. So coming together to separate with integrity and mutual respect would set the example for the next generation for how to manage conflict um, that starts with what they view in their homes by their primary uh, caregivers. Children learn from their parents. Of course they learn from their parents. They watch their parents and they see how parents resolve conflict. And if, if more parents who are going through a divorce did it using the collaborative process, children would be better problem solvers in their own life. And it would bring a, a trickle out effect of bringing more peace, peace in the school ground, peace uh, uh, in relationships as children grow older and they just learn a, a better way of re resolving disputes than, than being in, in a, a, com a combative uh, response. Divorce is the first major conflict that most children witness. If this conflict were to be handled compassionately and collaboratively, their view of handling conflict would be much improved and our culture and our world would evolve toward more peaceful solutions as a result. I have a couple of quotes that I want to share. One is by an American child psychologist and teacher, Haim Gannat, who said, children are like wet cement. Everything that falls on them leaves an impression. And second, from Miriam Wright Edelman, who's the founder of the Children's Defense Fund, who said, if we don't stand up for children, we don't stand for much. Let's talk about some of the qualities of collaborative divorce that makes it different than the litigated court approach to divorce. It encourages mutual respect and emphasizes the needs of children. It avoids going to court and thereby keeps the control of the process with the individuals. It provides for open communication, and it utilizes a problem-solving approach. It identifies and addresses the interests and concerns of all, and it prepares individuals for their new lives. 
In relation to creativity, how do you see collaborative divorce as different than the litigation model? The litigation model has parameters and expectations of conduct um, that are not easy to deviate from. And creativity, accountability, um, innovation are not expected or frankly wanted in an adversarial model. There's a traditional trajectory for how things go and success is often uh, measured by one's conformity to the model. And in collaborative, it's an, because it's an innovative and evolving process that meets the needs of the individuals who are before us and we take our, our clients as we find them, we have a greater ability to pivot, to innovate, to remain flexible, which are really the antidotes to the volatility, the uncertainty, the complexity and the ambiguity of the entire situation. You can see that from the very start, when we started collaborative law in 1990, one of the first things we said, two rules. One, you help with this, you help a conflicted couple, but if they're not willing to help you work things out, they're not willing to participate. You withdraw and turn it over so that they have to find some other way to do it. That's the important thing, that we are free to not stay there and deal with their thinking negative processes. If they don't want to participate, we withdraw. Only a small percentage ever have to do that. But anyway, that, that's a possibility. The other possibility is the paradigm shift. And the paradigm shift is a shift from litigation, where you bring your energies down to the level of the conflicted couple. And you're working with the couple there. And you are performing for them as a litigating lawyer. You take on and be a performer. So when the question asks, when the client asks, comes to a lawyer and says, what's two plus two? The litigating lawyer pulls the shade, shuts the door and says, what do you want it to be? You want it to be Two plus two is five. I'll see what I can do. That's what the lawyer is as a magic participant, performer. The shift to paradigms shift is you shift into a support role. You are there to help the clients resolve this. And you're doing that by moving your own energy up to your higher loving level and loving them in that sense and giving them all the tools that we have learned to do to help on the outer stuff, how to set goals, how to do that, that kind of thing, to help, help of financial people, neutrals to come in and do things, the child specialist, the, uh, uh, the lawyer, of course, but everybody, is a, everybody on the team is the leader. The lawyer isn't the leader necessarily. It's whoever shows up. As, but anyway, they're all as a team. In uh, collaborative practice, we can uh, do things outside of the traditional bounds of the law. And if that's what will meet the needs of the client. So uh, in collaborative practice, we still look at the law and understand it because that's the context in which these issues are being resolved. But, but we're not restricted to solutions within the box. We can be creative. It's really hard to compare litigation with collaborative divorce because they're like two different planets. And so what I can say is that for families entering a litigation process, it's all about who's right, who's wrong. It's about the application of laws that may or may not have anything to do what members of this family need or think is fair. In collaborative divorce, we can focus on each member of a family who are making a difficult, but it's gonna happen, transition. And so the fact that collaborative divorce brings together professionals who can help the families from a social psychological perspective, looking at legal perspectives, and also giving them the best financial opportunities. It's like, it's like how can we help this family? Is collaborative divorce, and sadly, without intending, Okay, 
our justice system says, how can we destroy this family? And no one wants that. So um, the collaborative approach to dispute resolution is, a, is far kinder than litigation. Litigation far too often is a war in which both sides emphasize, I guess would be the right word. Uh, they blow out of proportion all of the unkind or stupid things that their spouse did during their marriage, the things that often the spouse regrets having said or done at the time they did them. Um, but in the heat of battle, uh, they've got to pull out all the stops. And so they blow all of that out. It might not have been, might not have been um, an issue when they were married that uh, your husband came home and smoked marijuana every night, even when it was against the law. But when you're getting divorced, it's an issue. It becomes an issue. It gets blown out of proportion. And, um, and then on top of that, in the heat of battle, both spouses will say and do things that can never be forgiven. They may be, may be true. They may be untrue. It doesn't matter. They will say and do things that can never be forgiven. And so you finish up your divorce yeah, you're divorced, but you hate each other. We finish up our collaborative divorces with people giving each other gifts, with people um, performing impromptu, impromptu for me, because I wasn't expecting it, ceremonies of thanks. Thank you for the 20 years that, that you devoted to our marriage. Thank you for our kids. Thank you for um, whatever. I've seen that happen, and it, it just tears tears your heart right out of your body it's fabulous uh, i think the great opportunity of for of collaborative is that uh there is no kind of limitation of that kind of limitation so we all we always speak as collaborative as a sort of tailor-made process so we really build the process on the needs of the family and the clients we are uh, we are working for. So time-wise, uh, the length, uh, where we meet, how we meet, is all sort of designed and created by the professionals together with the parties to meet their needs. And at the same time, the solutions that we can uh, we can work on, the outcome that we can achieve, is not limited to what um, is it's not limited to what a court can do. We can take a lot of different decisions that can actually enter this uh, process. Collaborative divorce is a creative way to find solutions. It's different from the litigation model because it's a non-adversarial process. Everyone signs off on a participation agreement. Everyone's agreeing to work through the issues, to, to maintain the respect, to understand that uh, you're going to need to bring in the right professionals at the right time, the family professional, the financial professional, the legal professionals to work together. The bonus in having a process like this in a collaborative model is to ensure a peaceful resolution. In a collaborative divorce, I am awed on a regular basis by the things that happen. Um, you know, the creativity is really interesting because creativity may simply be silence of when someone, you know, needs to be witnessed or needs to be heard or held. Instead of, you know, saying anything, we can just sit there in silence. Um, and silence in itself is a powerful thing. The, the litigation models, by definition, you have to follow certain processes. We have rules of procedure that we need to follow for good reason. And while judges and lawyers and mediators and arbitrators have some scope, you are working within the confines of, of, of the law and the, the boxes that the law, the law allows remedies for. So I think within a strict legal model, the traditional legal model, much uh, opportunity for creativity is limited. It's pretty limited. You can make certain trades, but there are many things courts aren't allowed, judges aren't allowed to do. Or frankly, we know that most cases don't end up going to, to trial. 97% of cases everywhere are settling. But I also think lawyers, I'm afraid, often have a, a, a fear-based mindset that if they do something way outside the law, that that's a risk 
a big risk. And I think feeling fearful and feeling um, that you are, um, it, 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 it shies us away from creativity, even if the clients want us to do something. And I think it again is something that pulls us into a much more narrow way of problem solving. Let's hear about a time where families benefited from your ability as a collaborative practitioner to be creative or innovative when helping families to find peace and resolution. So bringing this creativity and innovation to my work as a collaborative divorce attorney has some really interesting results. And one example of this is a couple who came to us and told us they needed to get divorced. And on its face, we believed them. As we proceeded in the collaborative process, we identified what they were trying to achieve. And I remember, you know, on a whiteboard, uh, we had listed all their goals of what they were trying to achieve. And it was like the light went on for me finally, because I, I guess I opened myself up to this creativity and I wiped off the whiteboard. I said, wait a minute, I want to start this again and we intentionally and mindfully in a scaffolding way listed everything that we had heard from there them as to what they wanted to achieve and their heads were nodding yep that's right yes that's right when the whole list was there we were able to say you know what you don't need to get divorced for you to achieve these things because as we've been working together the underlying thing that we've heard from you is you love each other and you love each other's children from prior relationships. So this couple chose not to get divorced. And we used other legal tools of estate planning and doing a status of property agreement that allowed them to achieve something that they did not know that they could achieve in this process was to achieve the, what they they wanted to achieve in terms of leaving legacy for their own children, but staying together as a married couple. One day I was running with my therapy dog because I, I do serve as a child specialist. And, and I was just thinking, how could I bring the kids into the room? Because they are affected by every decision that their parents make. And I came up with this idea, which I'll hold. Can you see that? Okay. All right. So I asked the parents whether I'm working with minor or adult children, because our practice group uses adult children, uh, child specialists too, to send me a picture, an individual picture. This is our daughter, Laura, so there's no confidentiality issues. And I've asked the kids, or sometimes the parents, to tell me things about the child, and that's what the pictures are around the edge. And I, I hold these in front of my face like this, and, and in the beginning, I have them sitting on a little easel, tiny easel in front of me like this. And we often, I often sit between both attorneys so that the parents are looking across the table. Well, now we're on Zoom, but uh, at their children and the two attorneys, because that's uh, a very strong message to the parents that their kids are involved in this process. And Sometimes I have learned something from the children, minor or adult, that I have their permission to share. And I work with a lot of the same collaborative uh, professionals and I'll just pick the picture up and I'll say, I have something to say. Mom, dad, you told me you were going through a divorce process that's peaceful and respectful. Please stop arguing. I've heard too much arguing in the last few years. Please just make some agreements. These people are here to help you. Something like that. It really shifts how the parents go from there. A lot of times when you're working with a couple going through a divorce, we get stuck. There's moments where the professionals involved feel stuck. There's often moments where the, the couple themselves, the, the parents, feel really stuck and they're not sure where to go. And what I've been really, really noticing with my creative approach to working with families is that when we're stuck, everybody's looking for an answer. 
And so I've started using questions and made it a creative rule. Okay, now all we can do is ask questions. No one's allowed to answer them. You just ask questions. And it releases this pressure to solve it. And it tends to lead people to be more creative in their thinking and their outlook. Recently, I, it happened to me, I was helping a, a, a couple as I was the wife's lawyer. And there was a, a children from the first marriage of the wife that had had a strong relationship with the husband, but they were not related together. And in court, that relationship and the divorce of that couple would have had no space. Instead, we, we really managed to have that issue as part of the conversation, as part of the outcome. And it was important for both to talk about it. And I think that is a clear example of how we can be sort of more creative in the collaborative process uh, than we can do in a litigation sort of structured model. And yes, I can recall a case where we discovered that the idea of divorce was causing an extreme reaction in the client. And when we stopped doing what we thought we were supposed to do for that day and started to ask curious, open questions like, tell us more about that, it was revealed that the client had made a promise to a deceased parent never to divorce as it would be against that parent's religious beliefs. And so by taking the time to understand where this anxiety was coming from, this heightened emotion that was coming into the room um, that was destabilizing all of us, we, a member of the team, the legal team, was able to ask if perhaps talking about a legal separation instead of a divorce might help. And immediately, the energy changed, we shifted, you know, we still did the work that needed to be done, but the end result was a legal separation instead of a divorce that met that client's individual need. I have had a situation where I've worked with a collaborative divorce team. Um, it was involving a family where there was mental health issues involved and working at a time during COVID where we needed to have all of our meetings on Zoom, it was particularly stressful and very triggering to be on screen for, for one of the parties. And so it was very helpful to work through it creatively and go through the participation agreement one-on-one -on -one and also work in dyads and triads with the professional team in order to reach resolution. I'm happy to say that in taking a different approach, we were able to move through the process more simply and be able to attend to the needs, the individual needs that the, that the family had. Well, I remember one case where the client would really wanted uh, to show a way, uh, the, the husband in this case wanted to show uh, appreciation to his, his wife for her contributions during the marriage. She was a stay-at-home mom and she'd helped uh, raise the children and, and maintain the home. And she'd received an inheritance during the marriage. And normally that's not acknowledged in the divorce process in Ontario. It's if the inheritance was received and spent uh, during the marriage, it's, it's, it's gone. But he wanted to somehow show in a tangible way his respect and appreciation for his wife's contributions to the family and the marriage. And so he wanted to respect that, uh, that inheritance, even though he didn't have a legal obligation to do so. But it went a long way to bringing peace to that family. What innovations would you like to see in the collaborative divorce process? Innovation in collaborative practice. We have worked so hard to train the professionals to do good work, and we do good work, and we care a lot. So the innovation we need is how do we prepare the clients so they're ready for the dialogue, that they can get past the debate? I would like collaborative lawyers, um, collaborative counsel, I prefer to call us, because we're not truly adversaries anymore. We are counselors, just like the mental health people, just like the financial people who are involved in the collaborative process. And I think that there ought to be um, schooling that you can get in law school to learn some of the stuff that the mental health professionals get. Collaborative divorce to be more widely known from the general public, to be really seen as an option and uh, take us professionals off the burden to actually have to explain 
to uh, somebody that uh, is in a difficult situation about something new and instead being more having more opportunities of receiving people that already know about this option and so we can deepen something that is already uh, understood or if not well known at least heard of the future creativity and innovation of collaborative practice are things that i can't even imagine at this point you know from the time that stu web started this work you know 25 over 25 years ago it has gone from an attorney driven model with two attorneys and two clients sitting down at a table to an interdisciplinary approach of helping couples uncouple now when we talk about uncoupling there's three different areas of uncoupling there's the emotional side that's why we use a coach in our work there's the financial side that's why we use a financial person and there's the legal side and that's why we have the lawyers there so in the future i'm excited to see what other aspects of human relationship can be addressed within the collaborative container there's there's now go, needs to be for us to keep growing for us to be meeting and responsive to the tough cases that are showing up we need to develop an increased sophistication about our ability to work in deep conflict and and to let go of some ideas that might have been comfortable and to adopt some really um as i say deeply skillful approaches to hard conflict and for that's what i think we're finding are coming into our doorways into our offices and i think that mindset and skill set uh are the next is the next frontier for us to move toward to stay relevant and important in the world of conflict resolution i would like to have all collaborative professionals know about the united nations conventions on the rights of the child which was on november 29th 1989 where world leaders came together for really an historic commitment to the world's children which basically says oh and by the way 195 world countries have ratified this treaty um and it states basically that children have the right if they are capable uh in their development to have an opportunity to speak about any action that affects them and divorce would be one of those actions where they could even speak with a judge or attorneys and have a voice and what we know from work in collaborative and mediation is that when children feel like they've been heard the children are better adjusted the parents are better adjusted and their agreements are longer lasting more durable. So what I would want to see and what I am working toward with collaborative colleagues is that every case, every collaborative divorce case where the parents have minor and or adult children has a neutral child specialist as part of the professional team. Wow, what passion that exists amongst these professionals for bringing their creativity and innovation to the negotiation table in the collaborative divorce process. The link between these three elements couldn't be more clear to me and to those who participated in this film. My hope is that you our audience have made that paradigm shift as I did in recognizing not only the value that the collaborative process brings to separating and divorcing families who want to create that healthy thriving family and to stay out of court but also the fact that one of the key differentiators of this process from the litigation approach is our unique ability to use creativity and innovation to mutually resolve disputes with dignity and respect Thank you to our interviewees for your thoughtful participation, wisdom and passion. Thank you to my assistant who shared my vision and worked with me day and night for weeks to make this release possible and without whom this film would not have made it to the premiere on time. Thank you to the audience for listening to the impact that collaborative divorce is having on families around the world and the impact it will continue to have as this movement for creating healthy, thriving families after separation and divorce grows. I hope that collaborative divorce will become the primary negotiation process that's used by families for the sake of their family and two homes.
And finally, thank you to World Creativity and Innovation Week organizers for choosing collaboration as the 2022 theme for the celebration. See you next time.